YouTube. This podcast is personalized, is brought to you by Pinky Coulter and Dragon Queen. And our first story is Mario Kart 8 is the best selling racing game in the US history. That's right, Mario Kart 8 breaking records once again. Forza Who? Gran Turismo Who? Exactly. Mario Kart 8. Yep. What else we got? Because uh, we got a couple of Nintendo stories. We story. have a lot of Nintendo stories. So I got a Nintendo story. Nintendo is suing a guy called Gary Bowser because he is selling hacked Nintendo Switches. Uh, basically, like, you know, doing the whole um, hacking the firmware. What's that, what's that called? Uh, homebrew? He's doing, like, homebrew Switches, which is, I get, like, people homebrew their, their Wii for it to work as if it was back in the day. But homebrewing a modern system is really illegal. Will land you in prison. And the fact that he was selling it to other people. And the fact that his last name is Bowser. I feel like he did it on purpose. Yeah, like, like, oh, let me like be it. evil on purpose. Yeah, like, wow. Also, didn't we talk about how um, when it comes to stuff like this, you should wait until, until the consoles are a few years older? Yeah, like... Wait till the console is basically irrelevant and they stop selling it and they stop supporting it in order to do that kind of stuff. Um, like if you're in a home room, you're Wii, so you could, you could like go to the weather channel and stuff or the news channel. You see like modern news and weather. And that's interesting because there's the whole community like trying to make... Because the, the Wii is such a great system even to this day, people. I ha We have a Wii in our house. We do have a Wii. And... Um, People to this day are doing the online, like, you know, updating it as if it was modern. Like, the people really love the Wii. And the fact that we had the Wii U instead of the Wii HD, which would have been much more promising. Like, just the Wii with better graphics and performance. But it plays, like, the same type of stuff. It has the same features. Like, the weather channel. That kind of stuff was cool. Like, you just click the news or the weather or watch Netflix or a movie or something. And then you put in the... Um, you know, you're a game and stuff, and you can play old games and, and HD games. That would have been a lot better and, and stuff. But this homebrew stuff, like, we're going to homebrew, like, modern systems, and we're going to hack these modern systems. You're going to be in jail, buddy. Like, what are you what are you doing? The Nintendo Ninjas will come for you. Yeah. Uh, what else? So want? we got F-Zero. Ah. I know, in the news. In the news. Nintendo says that F-Zero is not dead, but it's asleep. According to an article. Yeah, like, wait, who said that quote? Was it like... I, I, it might have been Nintendo Life. Usually, I tend to... Yeah, be... but they had to get that quote from someone. Oh, uh, I think it was the people behind F-Zero. Oh, uh, okay. Makes sense, because uh, they tr at least they're acknowledging it, saying like, hey, like, it's not... We the reason, kill a franchise. Yeah, the reason they said it is because uh, when they got asked... They, they're not quite sure what to say because they're not sure how to bring it back. They said they, they want a big idea. They wanna, right. If they want to bring it back, they need like a big push, a big idea. Um, because they feel, especially with Mark, I, the reason I brought it up, because, especially because of Mario Kart and being a racing game and being like always usually the most popular game in every Switch um, you know, in in Switch and also every Nintendo console, um, they don't want to bring F Zero back just to be a racing game. Right. So a lot of people are saying like they should do a different genre, mm -hmm. uh, and that could bring back F Zero. My my opinion should be like make it a different genre, but also have a racing mode, like a story mode, which is like an adventure game or whatever they want to do um venture platform whatever they want to do right for for the captain falcon guy uh but have a separate mode where you race like you would in an f-zero game like the one for gamecube so like that could work because like nintendo you know nintendo's been doing a few games where there's a main mode and then the side mode which is like a different thing kind of like what bowser's fury like there's the main game and then there's the like side thing which is like end up being more popular so that could be a good balance between like new and old, like oh this new adventure game or whatever for Captain for Captain Falcon and a racing game, all in one. Like that could work. They could take elements from the GameCube one and just kind of like modify it to be more modern. The other thing, the other thing that would be cool if they could do is that if they wanted to add 
um, DLC to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, or if they wanted to make a Mario Kart 9, they could bring in Captain Falcon. He, ha I mean, there's already a, a trap for him, right? Yeah, but I don't see them doing DLC for such an old game already. Like, I, I know, but I'm saying if they Mario Kart to. 8 for the for the Switch was supposed to be like a, a improved version of Wii U, where they have the same game but more content, more characters. Right. So there's literally no point in having this DLC since it's the definitive Okay, version. but I'm saying if they wanted to do it, but or if they wanted to put a Mario Kart 9, which which I'm also kind of debating about based on the numbers that Mario Kart 8, 8 Deluxe is already doing, but it's just only as an idea because if they... Or like an update. Instead of DLC, it'll be like a free update. That too. Yeah. Like, if it's more it's more on the uh, on the side of, of wanting to, like, bring Captain Falcon in, into, in there because... Like if his track is already there, why don't have why don't you have the character? Yeah, and then slowly bring him back. Apart from like this, you know, him being in Smash, uh, to maybe think about, you know, just bringing back his franchise as a as an idea. But speaking of franchises that uh, we wish they were here, M Mother Three. So, the fifteen year anniversary. Uh, was upon us and the you know Mother 3 is a Japan only game and it got a translation translation patch and us you know US fans are like Mother 3 when? Mother 3 when? <laughs> Yo we've been asking for this game for so long that it's just a meme now true and it's like it was gonna be it was supposed to be a GBA title but GBA doesn't exist so what's gonna happen is you might have like, you know those retro people that sell the game like never that that time the Game Boy game was sold in twenty twenty. Yeah, that could happen for GBA, or they're just gonna put it on like Switch as a standalone. The the thing is that Nintendo doesn't want to do it because there were certain things in Mother Three that just they said that won't won't translate well in the West. Right. So That's I think what, what they're they gonna said. do, yeah, what they might do is just like do a patch with some localization effort. And then put it as a standalone game for like ten to ten fifteen dollars, ten dollars I think, for the Switch as like because they do that with Sonic, like they resell old Sonic as a Sega classics for the Switch, just like a collection for like ten dollars. If they give us an uncut version of it, or or unless they censor it, uh, not censor but like localized where they change a few things. Yeah, well, exactly. Sorry, maybe I should have word word that better. But yes, if they end up localizing it and taking the things out that they consider controversial for the for the West, then yes, and maybe they could do it. I I don't want to be like the negative Nancy, but it's been fifteen years, and then especially when Reggie joked about it, saying like, "Hmm, maybe I should bring out my translated Mother Three game and play it." Exactly. At this point, like, just give it to give it to the people. It'll make a lot of money. Like. With the core uh, or found audience, and um, I don't know I, I, the mother audience like people like Earthbound or Mother Two, and it, it's just like a neat, a neat little thing that that will make some money, and they they don't have to do much effort in order to put it out there. Just change a few things, and they sell it for ten bucks a pop is gonna make probably a, a million dollars, <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, speaking of anniversaries, uh, that's easy money. Like I don't know. Speaking of anniversaries, it was uh, thirty-two years of the Game Boy recently. Huh. I actually have uh, the classic Game Boy. Yeah, I gave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you know, thirty-two years going strong. Well, you know, going strong in people in people's memories. Not really. I don't know many people that use it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm more. I've always been more of a GBA kind of dude. So yeah, we have a lot of game announcements also that, that are coming to the Switch. Like the Ace Attorney uh, Chronicles collection uh, coming out July 27. It's already up for pre-order on Amazon, you know, from Capcom. Good old Ace Attorney. So go pick that up, please. Okay, yeah, Ace Attorney collection. And uh, there's some added uh, content where it's like uh, basically that you could just... Uh, there's a game mode that you can just play the game like uh, as a story, kind of like putting it as a movie, like an auto, like an auto mode, where you get to just watch Ace Attorney yeah. instead of play yourself. Just like a mode like that if you want to watch it as a movie, um, because it's very story based. So 
that's going to be interesting. Uh, what they just did there could open a can of worms in a sense where other franchises might start doing that. Like, there's a story mode you can play yourself, or there's a mode where you just click auto and it plays for you, and you can just watch it as a movie. Final Fantasy, possibly. Uh, well, Final <laughs> Fantasy is not a story-based game. It's an RPG. You have to actually attack. Yeah, but there's a lot of story elements. No, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about games like Ace Attorney or, or games like... Uh, uh, those Walking Dead or any of those like story specific, you click on. You, you have to know what I'm talking about. But Tech isn't space. there like isn't there already Final Fantasy? Because there's so many Final Fantasies. Is there, isn't there one like the like? Because a lot of them are very story heavy. Yeah, but it's an RPG where there's action involved. You have to fight the guy. You have to click on. How about the? Uh, not all of them are like that though. Well, there's RPGs, turn based action, uh, turn based RPGs. Then there's the action RPGs. Then there's the MMO. Then there's like, but most of the games, oh, there's a spin-off title. Some of them are like mystery dungeon spin-off titles. So Final Fantasy, like, is not what I mean. When I'm talking about story-based games, I mean like The Walking Dead, or uh, the, what's that one I don't like? The, the, the oh, Life is Strange. Life is Strange. Um, there's there's some or or uh, one of the classics for the PS3 was uh, Heavy Rain. Um, all those types where it's like focused on uh, quick time events or just like uh, choosing character interactions um, there's not much action in that sense it's just like uh, kind of like a, almost like a movie game um, those games are popular and they might have a mode where it plays automatically and you watch it as a movie um, this is different from RPGs where there's a lot of story but you have to actually fight and have some sort of actions uh, you know, like you have to have strategy and put armor and choose which is the you know best combination of attacks instead of just like a story where it's a guy who's like has to choose between different you know stuff and and he's like that th th that's what I mean like um, that might actually happen. Th th that's the can of worms I was talking about. Oh, like okay, an actual uh, this little mode could like blow up and ha and happen in other story stuff and change it for for in the future um it could be a game changer maybe it won't maybe they will not do this this is only for this game but that mode where you just completely change story games like that where it's just like watching it as a movie instead of you, you interacting with it could have a, a significant change in the in that side of the gaming industry um next story uh i saw on twitter uh bloomberg uh they said that there's gonna be more AR mobile games, augmented reality mobile games in the future, uh, with Niantic specifically. Like, for example, Pikmin was announced, a Niantic Pikmin game, right? And then we had, like, pre before that, we had Pokemon Go. So, we might get more augmented kind of games that have your location base, your, the, the, or just like augmented reality on your phone. Um, we might get more games like that in the future, not just Pikmin and Pokemon. Hell, we might get Kirby, you might get whatever. My boy. Speaking of, yeah, when are we getting next Kirby game? Yeah, there hasn't been any Kirby stuff. Well, except for the Fighters the Fighters game. Uh, um, I remember that hearing... That was like a spinoff. And yeah, there's... I know, but I remember hearing that they were working on a 3D Kirby game. And then that's the last we ever heard of that. Yeah, I think the reason why I haven't heard much of it, because it seems like three platformers take a long time to make. It might, it might be the Mario Odyssey <laughs> for mean... Kirby. It might be like... Uh, Kirby deserves a Mario Odyssey because a lot of the Kirby games have been generic so far except for like maybe Planet Robot on the 3DS which came out like what five six years ago I don't even know how long it came came out um, that like it needs it needs a fresh coat of paint out it needs like a fresh like 3D platformer that's like on par with like the, the Giants and the Nintendo Switch uh, line of games like that's what I think I want it to I want it to happen. I want a big push for Kirby because people are getting kind of tired of the generic 2D platformer or you know, either the same old formula with not much change. Um or a remake of something old or just like okay. Uh, Alright, the next I have some more game announcements. So we have Monster Hunter Stories Two, Wings of Ruin. It's coming out July 9th and it's up for pre order on Amazon at the moment. Uh this is a spin-off Monster Hunter series. Uh, the first one was Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Stories, obviously. So yeah, for you Monster Hunter fans that can't get enough of uh, 
the fact that we just got Rise and is Monster Hunter's killing it at the moment. There you go. Yeah, uh, sequel to the Monster Hunter spinoff. For more, basically more Monster Hunter. I mean, everyone, yeah, if, if you people want are obsessed Monster. with it now. So like, it's it's more Monster Hunter. They got to capitalize on that one. Exactly. Yeah. And then we got the Neo Geo collection, the physical collection on the Switch, that is already up for pre-order uh, on limited run games. So if you want some Neo Geo goodness, there you go. And then we got uh, Doom I 64. I know. So the Doom 64 physical came out on limited run games last year. Unfortunately, I missed a pre-order then. But Best Buy, I mean, you could check. I don't know if it's still up there, but Best Buy put up some, um, some up for you know, for you to 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 get on the Switch and PS4. So what ends up happening is a lot of times um, when limited run games puts up a pre-order for, you know, physical games, if they if they have any leftovers, or sometimes what they do is that Best Buy um, gets them from, you know, gets them from them and then puts on the on their website. But so like, usually when that happens, it's like way after their pre-order was, you know, went up. But yeah, it's something cool. So yeah, that went up, and obviously I picked it up because the Doom 64 and Doom. Because I want to uh, get all the Doom games. Physically. I got another story. Super Monkey Ball. Super Monkey Ball. Um, new game. New Super Monkey Ball game. It, it, well, no. 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 Uh, hey, before no, we're, we're not about g giving out like false information here. Hold on. The Super Monkey Ball M Banana Mania ratings board listing suggest we may. We, that Sega may revive the series. Confirmed. No, it's confirmed. Shh. Confirmed. Monkey Ball fans. Shh. It's confirmed. We're going to get more Monkey Ball. Hey, hey, hey. Confirmed. Stop. <laughs> Maybe. There's no confirmed in this. In this. Uh, well, you know what has been confirmed? That has actually been leaked and confirmed? Oh, gotcha. Go. Luigi Lego. Oh, yes. The Lego version of the Super Mario uh, the Luigi version of the Super Mario Lego thing has been confirmed. Uh, there was a leak before. Now it's been actually confirmed by Nintendo. They actually released a thing about it, a trailer. And yeah, so you can pick that up for your kid or for yourself. I don't care. Um, so yeah, that's that seems very wholesome. And uh, and the reason people thought that... like The reason it was like a leak was because it was audio of Mario calling out for Luigi. And yep. people were like, okay. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah. So ne the next news are Pokemon related, which I got I got right now. We got Sega to make a Pokemon arcade machine, Japan only. I know, freaking Sega. It's like let me throw my my head into rings to make and some Pokemon. And by Sega already, like geez. for reals. Like they they keep like teasing uh, of them always working together and doing you know stuff and like please just just. Then again, just get married big, already. Then again, I'm not a big fan of monopolies, but just like, get married already. <laughs> not a big fan of monopolies, but like my, I don't want like my, I don't want Microsoft to buy Sega. Oh, I'd rather if, like, because I like the Sega Nintendo collabs. Uh, they're pretty too. cool, yeah. And the fact that Sonic is on a lot of the Nintendo platforms. So. Exactly, and you know, uh, you can't take Sonic away from Mario. Like they're more, they're rivals. Anyway, more uh, Pokemon news. We got a science museums. In Japan, to have a fossil exhibition. So this one's pretty cool. I wish I could be there for this. But a few mu museums around Japan are going to hold exhibitions, uh, and they're going to be uh, around the fossil Pokémons. So the fossil Pokémons are going to be showcased, and they're going to be co like. Um, Compare with their real part, you know, real life counterparts. Yep. So you know, you could think of it, all the all the fossil Pokemon and then what they're based off. I remember I seen the pictures and it looks so awesome. If you're in Japan, I'm so jelly. So yeah, I think that's coming out. That that's happening this summer. That's amazing. I know. <laughs> Pokemon Museum, because it's funny in uh, in the Pokemon games and uh, the classic Pokemon games. If you go to where Brock is, uh, Pewter City, there is a museum <laughs> with Pokemon fossils. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's about time, Pewter City. No, but really, that's Life, that's life imitates art. Life imitates art. Everybody does. Everybody does. I wish I could. You know, 
if they, they, they could bring it to the West, they, they should they should totally bring it to the National the Museum of Natural History here in New York. Please, please. I don't know about that one. I know it's a it's a, it's a franchise. It's not like. I know it's Pokemon and, it's and, Pokemon. and getting it's a getting, company, not like actual historical, like you know. I mean, I'm sure they could do it. Like, yeah, I don't see it happening in the U.S. They have to do it separately. Like, maybe it could be like a pop up, uh, fossil, you know, like a pseudo museum pop up thing. That would be kind of cool. That would be. Um, well, the last Pokemon news before we jump to PlayStation, PlayStation, PlayStation and, and all that. Pokemon Snap comes out next week, April 30th. We're all very excited in this household, even if you didn't get the game, I did. I'm so excited. So they're doing a collab with Fujifilm. You know, Fujifilm that's still around that's making Polaroids. Uh, yeah, for hipster white girls, man. You know, we know the Polaroids. We've seen them. I, I, I have them. But, you know, they're mostly used by them to take pictures of themselves in their rooms and be quirky. That's um, true, but yeah. I am not white, but I still have them. Well, yeah, because you're like, you were a, like a pro photographer, so it makes sense you would have what I'm talking about the the plebs obviously gotcha. you, you get it like well the regular <laughs> edition uh which is the in, in instax mini link photo printer along with the app is coming out the same day as the pokemon game so pokemon snap and there's gonna be a pikachu edition which i have my eye on oh my gosh i have my eye on it's coming out next uh, next month in may so i have to explain this thing because for those who don't know and you're just listening to it uh as audio it's a device that connects to your phone on the Nintendo Switch app and the Nintendo Switch app connects to your Nintendo Switch and what that device does is that it prints screenshots uh, from the from the device. So yeah, so you could print out, you know, if you lose against your friends, you know, Smash or if you want, you know, your wonderful Snap pictures from Pokemon. Yep. So yes. it's it's a cool this cool little thing. Um, yeah, I think it does connect to your phone, or does it connect to your? Switch? I was a little confused by that. But yeah, the like, app. I, the, I'm not sure if the app uh, is 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 for your for the switch or for your phone or for both. I need to because look. what I don't understand is you take screenshots using the switch already. There's a screenshot button. Th- there is. And then you could you could go to your photo albums on the switch and post it on Twitter or social media. Yeah, but then so I understand why you need your phone for that. Where you could just I thought I don't know because the half number this thing has not come out yet. So right, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna be trying it out. So when I do get it, I, I'm we might talk do a about, video on it. Yeah, exactly. We'll do a video on it. We'll talk about it on a podcast. But we'll be getting it. Are, are we getting the Pikachu the one though? Is there, so the regular edition is a hundred bucks, and the Pikachu one is a twenty or more, so it's one hundred twenty. It's coming out next month. So yeah, we getting. We'll do a video on it. We cool. Yeah, it's actually reminiscent of the of their back in the day. Blockbuster. No, not just that. Uh, the Game Boy Camera. Oh yeah, the Game Boy. The, oh yeah, that's you take true. the Game Boy Camera and then you take the Blockbuster. And I think they print it for you. Right? No, 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 no. There was a, there was like a little printer for you, like add-on for your, or for your. Oh, Game Boy. right, there was. Yeah, there was. And, so but this, the, the wow, I'm, how times. I know. How the time is a flat circle thing, whereas like <laughs> back then, the thing will print out a screen. You know, I mean, like, it wasn't that quality wasn't great, but it, yeah, it still did it. it. You know, it print out something your Game Boy took. Now the Switch is printing. Now you're printing out something from the Switch. Like. <laughs> yeah, it does come. Wow, full circle, huh? Full circle, wow. And I, and I know, since I have Fujifilm cameras, the Polaroids, I mean, the camera, the, the quality is actually not bad. So right. you have yeah. you have some you have some decent photos from your Switch. Huh. Um, the, the reason I mentioned Blockbuster is because when a Snap came out, that's, that's how the, they did a collab, right? Yeah. You were able to go to Blockbuster and get them printed? Yep. Uh... Crazy you know, time, I'm so huh? glad. Uh, everyone everyone knew this was going to happen. We just didn't know how. But it makes sense that it's Fujifilm. Yeah. Uh, so we got some PlayStation news. Yes, we do. PS5 is the fastest selling console in the world. That is crazy. The hype for PS5 is insane. Like, the fact that... It's more hype than the, back in PS... I remember the PS4 came out. That was a pretty big deal. But the PS5 has more hype. Uh... N- like, I've never seen this much hype since, like, the Wii. The fact that it sells out everywhere is impossible to find. Everyone lines up for it. It becomes, like, a clout signal. Like a like a Supreme logo. Like, all these fucking... It really is. E- E-girls, E-boys, all these famous people are getting it. And it's, like, a sign of status at this point. It's like... It really yeah, is. Yeah, sure. $500 is a pricey thing. But for double the money, you could get a good PC. So, it's more of a... 
just because it's a PS5. Just because, you know... Yeah, and I feel kind of bad because it's going to be out soon. Yeah, like, we're planning on getting it. I w would prefer if they make a, a, a PS5 Slim or a different, like, looking version of PS5. Yeah, we're not, like, in a rush rush to get it, but we know that we will have to eventually because um, of the way, it's, the way it's selling, and we would like to use it also to watch movies. Yeah, watch movies, play PS4 games, but... Some PS5 games. Yeah. Like... Because we don't, we didn't have the PS4, so we're like, we could get PS4 games for cheap and play it on the PS5 because the PS5 is pretty much backwards compatible, with the exception of a few games. But a lot of the games are backwards compatible, so uh, and you could just get a bunch of cheap games and play it there. And uh, what the PS5 does, it takes PS4 games and improves um, the quality a bit, upscales it, things like that. So it's not a bad deal for 500. If you think about it, because uh, the controller is pretty advanced, the the system is, is pretty good, and now they're planning on adding uh, extra memory. Uh, oh yes, that was yeah, that we, was in the we, last we, podcast. Yeah, right? we covered yeah. it. Yeah, which is great. We we will be waiting for that, but apparently they're also gonna add movies. Yeah. So this is a trial thing. The PlayStation Plus uh, service uh, my will start adding movies in Poland. It's like a trial thing, and if it gets successful, they might be international. Yeah. Um, so, in the sense, it's gonna have like uh, movies, like the way it's gonna be like a service where you play games, but also watch movies. Like, uh, sure, it makes sense. Sony does make movies, but still, people were people were expecting gaming news. Yeah, but you know, they want to have a little extra, uh, just like a re more of a reason to have PlayStation Plus. And yeah, it's gonna have like Sony movies, like Venom, like Spider Man stuff, and just like. Movies made by Sony, you know, Sony for that. Oh, yeah, I have good news for you, uh, Vita and PS3 fans. The PS Store will not be closing just yet. You could still buy your Vita and PS3 games, so you could still use it. It's all good for now. Jim Ryan said, I'm, just thinking, of, I'm just thinking of getting a, a PS Vita just for like, uh, if, if there's any games I'm interested in, also, like, I could like sell it in the future and like. Make some money off that because uh, there are people that got into the Wii U stuff just for collecting, and then like holy crap, like this thing is gonna, uh, it's it could sell for expensive once because uh, remember once something stops production and the eShop or the digital store stops um, for that system, the prices go up. Yeah, and I've seen people, famous people, like, uh, a good example is uh, the guy from Dr Drama Alert, Keemstar. He literally collects Wii U games. He has a whole, like, room of just Wii U games. Like, a whole collection of old games. From, uh, he has, like, a whole segment for just the Wii U's titles. And he says that he's, the reason he has them is to sell it for a lot of money once the, the, the availability goes way down and it's, and it's hard to get. He could sell it for for like a, a profit and a lot of people are doing it with classic stuff not just wii u but we're talking like uh wii gamecube playstation 3 playstation 2 um so once the support goes down uh that's gonna be worth a lot of money and then, so if for those collectors or or, or people that want to sell um uh, make make some money like that that i recommend for, for you investors out there for you uh, big, big brain investor people like for for PSP fans, sorry, there's oh no, it's over. Store, it's, it's over. The PSP is over, but it's over. PlayStation Vita, like that, that has a has its own little cult following. I know it lost its 3DS, it got mocked by 3DS, but it has its own little cult following, and it's not a bad system. It did pretty well in this in in the sense that it had a lot of good features. It just 3DS was just popping. 3DS had so many games, and it's like one of my it's probably like my favorite handheld. Like it's so so much great stuff. Yeah, 3DS is great. Yeah. Actually, uh, that. I think I still have my uh, Ace Attorney games on 3DS. Yeah, I play like DS games in there. I play like some 3DS stuff, stuff from the eShop. Now, I don't like the fact that like they took away the Game Boy Advance stuff. And like, yeah, that, that, that kind of sucks. But you could get a DS Lite and play Game Boy Advance. Or Game Boy Advance Oh no, SP tell, and, tell, yeah. tell the listeners about the, the Sony patent. Oh. Tell them. So you know how this podcast is personalized? Well, Sony wanted it to be personalized as well. This PlayStation uh, well does not dry just yet, guys. S the PlayStation news um, in this podcast, like, I think it's rivaling Nintendo news because it's mostly covering Nintendo news. But more PlayStation news. This is huge. 
Uh, and then Sony had a patent, which they plan on, um, they planned on AI literally making your game personalized in the sense that you, it copies your play style. And if you leave it on auto, like on autopilot, it'll play for you for a certain amount of time. So you have to, let's say you play two to three hours and it copies your uh, play style, everything you do. And it, it, it kind of implies on how would you play, um, how would you play the game? But it does it for you after collecting a certain amount of data. So it's like the AI is playing the game for you. Uh, I mean, if you need a bathroom break or something. Yeah, if you don't want to pause the game. I mean, I, I don't know, like, the ethical side of that, like. Yeah, because it it will have to be pretty invasive. Not just that, like the fact that you're playing online, you could just like something is playing for you. I just don't like that. Like, like playing someone playing the game for you, or machine playing the game for you. I just. It'll probably do better. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I feel like it defeats the purpose of getting good at a video game. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that patent was really for long term. Right, and it's just a patent. But the technology, I think, might be out there. What I think might come out of this that might be cool is literally making personalized games. Instead of the game playing for you, the game changes depending on how you play. Mm -hmm. Like the that creepy pasta. That is literally why we call the podcast. That is based on that creepy pasta where. Well, uh, Super Mario sixty four is personalized. Oh, it definitely people, is. People thought like they had weird dreams about it's a, such a uh, like that's a game that came out of Nintendo sixty four that looks very odd now because the graphics were uncanny uh, at the time because they were trying to push for three D for the first time. So because it was so uncanny and the game had so much elements to it, it was such an expansive game that people remember it differently because it was so long ago and the game had a lot of content for first time. And that it looks so uncanny that people remember things differently and had a lot of theories about it. One of those theories was that the game personalized itself for you because people remember it differently. People feel uneasy when they're playing someone else's Mario 64 copy. Or uh, Wet Dry World. Or the Wet Dry World location is very strange. So that creepypasta uh, inspired the name of this podcast. The Wet Dry World location is definitely very strange. Uh, when you look up at the skybox, the image is um, it is in a country. I th it shows a city. It's just a city. Yeah, yeah, but it's in a different country though. In, yeah, a city from like Spain or something. That's the thing. I I think it was Spain. I think so. Or uh, but it, it, I think that was debunked. I uh, know. I think what they do is they took a stock image of some random city. Yeah, but, right. But they, it was like you know. And then they put it in the background. Right, right, but. The the level itself is a bit strange, though. It is. It's a very strange level. There's a lot of things going on, and it's just... People feel uneasy playing it. Um, I think there were more weirder levels, like the Haunted one or Hazy Maze Cave was very strange. Uh, Wet Dry World was just like... It felt almost incomplete compared to the other ones because they're just bits and pieces there. The puzzles are just... Like, the, the environment itself felt like it was just different things attached together, pasted together. Right, but together. also people are saying that the white dry world is... Like, the obstacles were just, like, sometimes they didn't even match what was going on. Right, bit. but also white dry world is uh, a town that drowned? Yeah. Like, it ended up underwater? So, that's why... So, it's, we, it's we, a we pseudo take... water level, and it was, like, a flooded town. Yeah, they, they, you're, so you're able to control the the water levels depending on if you need to go up or, or down. Or, I think that's why it looks so strange just because... Well, so you can't open the doors. And people are saying that, that the network of the white drive world area is supposed to be like a brain or something. Yeah, like if they take the map and, yeah. and draw it out, people thought it looked like a brain. Yeah, I think we should stop now. This is just weird. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. We digress a bit, but the concept of that podcast is based on that creepypasta. So we just made a joke out of it. Um, uh, but the fact that the, the, the AI personalization thing uh, is becoming a reality is kind of funny because how people are memeing an old game for supposedly being personalized. And now we have actual possible personalized content uh, using AI, which the creepypasta says that it used AI. Uh, but obviously the, the Mario 64 AI was not that advanced because it's impossible for a game from that era to be that advanced. But hey, we might be reaching that stage. So that's pretty big. 
Um, Psychonauts 2 was delayed. Sorry, Psychonauts fans. Yep, sad. And Lord of the Rings MMO cancelled. Yeah, Amazon and Tencent couldn't agree. That sucks. I know, it does. After, t what, two years? They're like, oh, well, sorry, bye. Shutting it down. Well, MMO, I'm actually excited about somewhat, because I'm not a really big MMO guy, but one I want to check out is the Harry Potter one. Oh, yeah. I'm um, not a very big Harry Potter fan, but I enjoy some of the movies. And I think that, like, this is actually, you make your own character, so it's not tied to the Harry Potter stuff. Well, oh, in that mean, sense, like oh, it's, it's not it's, really. I guess it's not what it. I guess it's it's just not really tied to the movies and and stories because basically, directly, it's more loosely tied because the world is still the same. Oh, but, world, yeah, but not the characters. But not the characters and possibly like the story stories. Unless they may, unless maybe some characters do make an appearance. We don't know. Right, maybe so cameos. It's this is what I think that should be going moving forward. Where uh, a franchise has a great, uh, expansive world and and world building. But a lot of the time, people get bored of the same characters being recycled over and over. So I think a good idea for a lot of these video games or movies or TV shows to do is maybe do stuff in the same world, but different story and characters. I, th I could see that moving forward in other video games. Like, even Pokemon. Like, let's say, you know, you try something different. Um, that could work. That could definitely work. Uh, like, if we want to revisit Johto or Kanto once again, it'll be different gym leaders or it takes place in the future and different story but same region i could see that happening in all kinds of game, all kinds of franchises and harry potter seems to be doing that like oh you guys are for people that like are kind of never read the books or or not really big on the you know like have not seen all the movies or just know about harry potter but not big not too big on it i think the game might be for you in the sense that it's just uh it's kind of its own thing and that, that, I could see that working, honestly. All right, guys, we got two more stories for the main one. Uh, Cyberpunk, I'm sorry. I know. I, I, we try to avoid it, but it is, is, it is like pretty much impossible. So CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk 2077. It sold 13.7 million copies in three weeks. And uh, about 30,000 30, people got refunds. Jeez, that little people got refunds? Yeah. What a joke of a game. Yeah, it is a joke. I just had to throw it I'm out I'm glad there. I didn't get it. I was actually going to get it. I'm glad I didn't at this point. Yeah, me me too. Obviously, if if, if we were gotten it, we were just one of us. So, at least we didn't have to spend. Alright. The that's what that's that's another thing when this like you know there's a like, new game coming out now now I get a little more nervous and I just kind of weigh out for reviews and for people to say if they like it or not. Yeah. Just because it's like okay, because I was so I feel like I was saved when it comes to like not getting Cyberpunk, but then also you know not getting the other game that I wish I not speak of. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna start. I'll have to start doing for certain games. And then the last story for the the main one is uh, Super Potato, Super Potato, Super Potato. If you don't know what that is, shame on you. No, it's okay. I it's, didn't know what it was. <laughs> it's a it's a legendary yes legendary uh, store game store in Japan. It's opening its international eBay shop. So the store is very well known for for having about ten locations in Japan. The main one being Akihabara, Akihabara, Tokyo. Um, and it, that main one has about three floors of games and animes and figures and all the nerdy stuff that you like and maybe we all like in this podcast and the people listening. Uh, but the stuff is a bit pricey and the games are obviously Japan only. But if you're a collector... And if you like retro stuff, they have retro stuff, right? Yes, they do. Yep. Then this is for you. Check out their uh, the eBay shop. Yep. Super now potato. on eBay because now they're going international. That's great. Yes. But the final, final, final story was the final was... story, which I actually watched it and you didn't. Was the Resident Evil showcase? Uh, first I'll cover the fact that we had a few demos, but we we weren't able to cover um, it before. But 
the Sony was able to get Resident Evil first when it comes to the demo wise. So if you're if you you know you own a PS5, PS4, you were able to play the demo for for Resident Evil 8 first. And and you if you miss the April 17, 18, which was uh North America, Europe and Asia, you you but you if you if you miss the, the deadline, you could still catch it tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, April twenty fourth, in North America, uh, to to the next day, April twenty fifth. It's a one a one a.m. PDT uh, Pacific time. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. So you figure out uh, your time zone. And then in Europe and Asia. So in Europe is uh April twenty fifth at seven p.m. until the next day. Uh, 3 a.m. and you figure out your times on there. And Asia is um, also April 25th to the next day, April 26th, uh, 1 a.m. Hong Kong time. So yeah. Huh. So yeah, it's, uh, it's tune in for tomorrow for for your demo time, so you could play. Yep. On Sony systems. But if you're uh, if you want if you're not on Sony. If you got Xbox, Steam, or Stadia, May 1st, that is for you. You could play the time-limited demo. What about PC? I just said Steam. Oh, Steam. Okay. Yeah. I just heard Stadia. I'm like... No, no, no. Uh, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, S, and X, Xbox One, Steam, and Stadia. Wow. All right, there you go. Yeah, they really want you to play this game. Yeah, it's like yeah, this game. This game. So the demo is is uh up to sixty minutes on all platforms, but that's uh May first, North America, uh five p.m. until the next day, May second, uh, uh PDT, and in Europe is May second, two a.m. to to the next day, May third, uh two a.m. CEST, in Asia is May second, eight a.m. to May third a.m. Hong Kong time. So yeah. Go play the demos. I wish you could play it. Maybe you could, maybe you're on your computer. Mm, I, I don't know. Oh, you think you you don't think you could handle the demo? <laughs> uh maybe. Uh but I have to probably like, uh, get a PlayStation. Is there is there I think there might be a way to get a PlayStation controller uh but like as a USB to connect to the PC. Um, Probably. Yeah, so it'll be easier to play. Yeah, so I just wanted to come with the demos first. Um, that way I could also play some. Um, but I'll tell you the next. PS2 stuff. ROMs. Yeah, so so that's the demo stuff. I just thought I should cover that first because these are you know time limited, so you know you have you only have a certain amount of time to play them. So we got the Resident Evil Village Mercenaries mode, which very people are excited that's coming back. It's just a different mode. And then, you know, if you have Netflix and you like Resident Evil, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness deb- debuts in July 2021. So go watch. It's um, a Netflix show? Yes, it is. All right. There you go. It's a lot of Resident Evil content. Yes. Oh, and also there's going to be a new chapter to celebrate 25 years of Resident Evil. Dead by Daylight is going to do a collaboration. Ah, there you go. Dead by Daylight fans. I know my brother's a big Dead by Daylight fan who plays it consistently and always plays it when they add a new character and things like that. Um, so that's our June. June of June of this year. Uh, the Oculus already did their did their cho- their like their showcase presentation thing but resident evil 4 is coming out for oculus quest 2 so and resident evil 4 is very well beloved so people are excited so the vr mode um and then there was some information about the re- the resolution and frame rates so ps5 xbox series x does 4k 60 frames per second with ray tracing and Xbox Series S does 1440p, um, 45 frames per second, and 30 FPS for ray tracing. 
all right not bad right so yeah those are all the very i mean i thought the showcase was very good uh it was about 20 minutes and they showed a lot of stuff and i feel like the more i see this game i was like wow why can't we have the ps5 already <laughs> yeah we do plan on getting it like i don't know i don't know when but we'll get eventually and i want to get village all right and I would like, I wish I could try this. Are you sure we can't play it on your computer? I said maybe, maybe. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, because the next the next demo date is, uh, is May 1st. All right. I'll see what I can do. So, yeah. And, of course, we got Waifu, the vampire Waifu on the cover. Yep. That's that. Enjoy, enjoy your Waifus for... April, early May for... Wait. Wait, the game comes out next month, right? Does it? I forget. Like, th that means the demo's that soon? Yeah, well, the demo... Th yeah, the demo's pretty soon. Huh, they're really confident about this one. They, yeah, I mean, based on what we see... Because we got to see gameplay during the... Yeah, we got to see more gameplay during the showcase... And then they 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 announce about Sony getting the, the demo first, and then everyone else. So yeah, they they they're very confident. All right, well guys, uh, thanks you thanks for enjoying this. Um, thanks for tuning in. Right, and make sure you if you're a Resident Evil fan to check out this demo. Uh, heard it's gonna be good, and uh, yeah, so. If you have PS5, you get it early, and if you have a PC, you get it late. That's the game. Um, thanks for tuning in once again, and have a good one. Bye-bye.